What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, that is a San Jose Sharks stealth jersey, which many fans don't like. Well, Sharks fans specifically, but I don't really care. That jersey looks cool, and you can say whatever you want about it. But we're not here to talk hockey stuff. All we're here for is to talk about camera gear, which you probably already can assume. What's in my backpack? Well, camera backpack in this case. Obviously, when we say backpack, obviously you kind of wonder what kind of bags I have. So I technically have two backpacks and I'm going to start with the one I usually use, which is partially for my school life. And that is the Endurax. Uh, I forgot what the model name was, but it's kind of more of like a travel backpack that you can use for like school, for, I don't know, hiking and stuff, where I can use for both photo photo stuff and hiking stuff well and other essentials um, I mainly use it obviously for high school since I'm still obviously a high school student and honestly this backpack is decent enough it's not very expensive it's very affordable in this case well my god technically half the price of but still it's very affordable in case you're looking for a cheap backpack but also that is fairly decent enough which does its job as well by the way I'm gonna link all of the stuff that I mentioned in this video like all of the gears and stuff I use to edit and take photos all in the description so I'll try my best to link everything if there is something I miss out I'm sorry I'm, I'll try my best to get it all done and and actually back to the backpacks I have yet another backpack and that one is probably the one I really hate the most and that is, I don't know, the Amazon Basics camera, camera backpack. I don't know what the real name is because I didn't really own it before. And it's pretty much where you can store all of your camera stuff, well, and other set essentials. And honestly, it's not a backpack I would really recommend because for one, it's not very comfortable, comfortable in terms of like when you hike and stuff, it's more of like street photography and also, um, I use these ropes sometimes, but they usually are not the most stable ones. So, unless you have beginner stuff, it might not really matter. <laughs> unless you're like a beginner, it might not really matter. But if, if you're a pro, you know like what the real standards are. But I mean, it's not the best backup, but, but I usually use it only to store my camera stuff that I have uh, on my shelf so that they don't um, collect dust, which is quite frankly annoying. But enough of the backpack talks, now we, obviously I want to really get to the camera stuff, which is the main talk of this video. And obviously my camera here in this case is the Nikon D5600, which is a camera between somewhat of a already like advanced beginner and already like a semi-pro to a pro photographer. Well, I'm pretty much becoming a somewhat of a semi-pro photographer already. And it's a fairly good camera, well, for photography only, not for videos, as you might see right now in this video. And it has like all the essential stuff that you need for like ISO, wide balance, and pretty much shutter speed and everything. Like it does its job. Well, obviously, one break I have with it is its autofocus, because you many know Nikon isn't really the best with autofocus, and I suffer with that as well. But other than that, it's pretty much a camera that does, does its job. Like I don't have any much other complaints for now, but obviously I'm trying to upgrade from uh, not the cropped sensor to more of a full frame sensor, partially because I want to shoot in low light and this camera isn't really capable of doing that. So it's kind of a major, tra major drawback I'm dealing with with this camera. It's pretty much also very affordable actually. So if you're looking for a good camera that, that pretty much does everything, that is a very affordable camera. It's pretty much, 600 bucks I think or I don't know like it depends but it's fairly of a good camera to use onto the lenses I do have only like five as of the moment of this filming because I don't really feel like I don't need any more lenses at this point because I feel like I have a solid lens collection and stuff or well not collection but more of a lineup so the first one is the 10 to 20 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6 millimeter lens and it's a very wide angle lens as you might assume so I was quite shocked when I tried it on the first time and how wide it was especially when you put it on 10 millimeters that the view pretty much captures some of what the bird bird sees basically if you understand biology i didn't really use the lens that much because i usually shoot portraits as you might know but it's a very good lens from pretty much landscape or street photography if you do that kind of photography you might want to use that um i don't really have any complaints about it it's a very good lens well obviously i said it has a very small f-stop which is 
quite frank, what I'm annoyed with, but that's why it's cheap partially. But other than that, it's a lens I really find to have, like just in case if you want to do a wide angle shot and you have always a lens um, ready for it. Next, moving on to the 35mm lens, which is starting, by the way, from the lens I really use a lot. Uh, the 35mm prime lens f1.8. And that's actually why I'm going to encourage beginner photographers to invest into prime lenses when you try to build your lens lineup because prime lenses are very, very... Jeez, I don't want to say banger or... Now, anyway, like they're, they're very useful. They're, they do their job, like they're good for many stuff. And usually they have a very, very high f-stop. Well, well, not f-stop, aperture, what am I saying? By far, this one, I usually use it for landscapes or car photography in this case. And it's by far the lens that I never had complaints about. It's a very good lens. Uh, by the way, that's not full frame because it, it says DX here and DX basically doesn't mean that it's a full frame lens. So if you own a full, full frame Nikon in this case and you have this lens, so don't expect the image to be as banger as with a full frame lens. So you have to be careful when you make a lens, lens purchase. So this is where you also have to be very cautious. Next is uh, one, actually one of my favorite lenses in my lineup and that's the 50 millimeter F1.8 prime lens. And that thing never failed me ever since I got it. That thing does everything, it does portraits, it does cars, it does even landscapes sometimes, it does pretty much everything I can think of. It's a, a must have lens in your lineup. So. There are a few lenses in my opinion that every photographer should own, like a, this comes for example like a 50mm prime lens, a telephoto and some other type of lenses, like that type of lens is one of them. So if you're a beginner and you're starting to photography, get one of these, these things are pretty much essential for your lineup, I'm very honest here. Now next is my second favorite or still favorite lens in my lineup and that is the 70-200 to f2.8 telephoto lens. And in my opinion, like I heard so many people, photographers say uh, every photographer should own a telephoto. That means that 70 to 200 or 100 to 400. And I thought, okay, like let's do that. But ever since I got that lens, I never stopped using it because that lens is a banger. It does good in portraits and car photography. It does a very damn good job. But the thing is with telephotos, they are very, very expensive. They're not very easy to afford. Well, depending on what camera brand you're shooting, especially if you're Sony. Um, I'm not trying to draw Sony users by the way, I'm just saying it. But uh, that's the cheapest telephoto I could ever find online ever, which was 800 bucks because usually telephotos photos are over 1000 bucks or even 2000, which if you're a beginner photographer, don't be shocked when you see these prices. That is very common with telephotos. But that's the cheapest I could find and also my favorite feature on this lens, probably that my other lenses don't have is autofocus, manual focus. Like, how cool is that tool? Because if you shoot like in the dark and you're not sure if you're on autofocus or manual focus, you would probably pull out your flashlight and just check what you're on. This lens kind of indicates you by basically feeling the, how wide the ring is basically. If it's close, like it's shorter, when it's on like manual, it's very long. And that tool is very useful. Uh, it's, just, it's just great. Next is probably my recent addition to my lineup. Also my favorite in this case is the GoPro Hero 8 Black pretty much. I think there's a silver and stuff, I'm not sure. And I don't think I might need to purchase or get a new GoPro in the f next five to 10 years because that thing is pretty much so reliable. It does its job. It does what you want to have it to do, like film POV, cinematic stuff, or even like body footage when you mountain bike or ski. It does everything. And obviously I use it for POV series because I really find that type of idea very useful since I like to take pictures, but I don't really like to vlog. That thing is pretty much essential in this case, but when I want to film a POV, I need a body mount, which I gladly also got at the same time, is this GoPro um, body mount with this uh, pillow pad. And weird story is when I was researching for like the body mounts, I couldn't find any mounts that featured this kind of a pillow because that pillow is probably the key to comfort for like very good use and it's just very easy using it as an interface like fuck what I'm saying so let me just demonstrate here by opening it so obviously how, how you gonna use it you put it onto your body pretty much like a backpack by the way and you put it on your GoPro by obviously screwing it on and off you go with your POV that's pretty much how it goes it's very easy it's 
30 bucks of Amazon from what I understand because I couldn't find any other vitamins with a body pillow again. The next bit is I don't see photographers always have like from amateur hobby to professional sometimes even is a cleaning kit. And I'm gonna say this to photographers, all photographers out loud, please own a cleaning kit because in the end you don't wanna uh, go out on a photo shoot and then have a dirty lens and take a picture and then you go onto your computer and then realize, oh my God, why is the picture so weird? It's because you don't take care of your camera at all. So please own a cleaning kit. Like it's really gonna save your life for many, many years actually. It doesn't mean you have to clean your camera all the time, like from every single photo shoot, just clean at least once a week or like five times a month. It's actually very essential because in the end you don't want to have a dirty lens and it might even cause some technical problems with the autofocus and stuff, which you don't want to have when you're taking pictures. So please own a clinic, like it's very important to invest into one. And yeah, the case is a whole different story. I might uh, do another video because that's a bit of a weird, weird story, by the way. The last bit or the last part actually of this video is uh, my laptop. That's pretty much where I added my photos. On this laptop, the 2015, early 2015, by the way, MacBook Pro, but also on a 2013 Mac Pro, which is right behind the camera because I don't really like to film my videos there because you probably saw from the last video, it didn't really work out there. And I usually edit all of my pictures on both of these computers, well, video on the Mac Pro in this case. I all edit these on Lightroom Classic and Photoshop because I just don't understand why Lightroom, the CC one, even exists. But I mean, that's in my opinion, so don't take that criticism serious. And obviously I have so many issues with this computer, but so far it doesn't drop for now, but at some point I might have to upgrade the computer because it's over six years old, which is obviously not good for today's laptops, by the way. So at some point I might have to upgrade it from, to maybe a 2020 to 2021 MacBook Pro. But other than that, like it's um, a very good workhorse for my videos um, and well, videos for the PC and for my photo editing. So uh, yeah, and if you wonder why it makes this weird noise, it's because I actually had to change the battery of this laptop twice because pandemic and pandemic means online school, which is fucking annoying. I shouldn't stop swearing actually because I don't want to get in trouble for this. So that's it, I guess, because I don't know what what else to show because that's pretty much all I have for my photography. I'm gonna link again, as I said, everything in the description from all the backpacks, lens, cameras, and the computers uh, in the description. So you can go look at them if you, in case you wanna uh, buy some of it, like, well, also invest into it because you'll find that type of a gear useful, but you don't have it. I'll try my best to link everything. I don't know if I'm gonna get to all of them, but I'm gonna try my best to find everything. But other than that, if you like this video, you can leave a like or even a sub, but else, I'll see you next time.